All right, sound sound is working. Uh, looks like the recording I did in class was fine, so um, don't need to upload last year's version or anything. And now just a few minutes to wrap up today's lecture. Sorry, I didn't quite get it done in time, uh, but as I've said before, I like to be deliberate when talking. I don't want to gloss over things too quickly uh, in a race to get things done. So to wrap up our look at Cenozoic mammalian divergences in general, like specific cases coming up for the next couple of weeks, as I said, um, one of the big events towards the most recent part of Earth history is called GABI, the Great American Biotic Interchange. Now, as I've explained, South America was an island continent for most of the Cenozoic. It was isolated from the rest of the continents. It had its own endemic, that is, unique fauna, assemblage of animals. There was this native South American radiation of ungulates, that's hoof, that is hoofed mammals. Uh, there were the cingulates, that is the armadillos. There were the uh, folivorans, that is the sloths. Um, and some other groups, the sporacidonts, the native metatherian predators. Well, in the late part of the Cenozoic, the most recent part of the Cenozoic, the Isthmus of Panama forms. That's that little strip of land that connects North America and South America. And if you remember, this is a, a section of land that was capable of being bisected using late 19th, early 20th century technology, that is, the Panama Canal. So it's not a huge strip of land. And yet, it allowed for one of the biggest transformations of the diversity of life, at least terrestrial animals, uh, in the last several million years. This little strip of land allowed North American animals, and therefore part of this larger world continent, to head south, and vice versa. Uh, and so here we see heading south, <clears throat> we've got gonfotheriids, which are a sort of proboscidean, that is elephant group. Uh, we have tapirs, we have camelids. That's right, the llama and the alpaca and their wild ancestors, vicuña and Wanakos. They're not South American. They're of North American ancestry. Camels actually originated in North America. Deer, cats, jaguars did not come from South America. <laughs> uh, peccaries, canids, that is dogs, ursids, that is bears, they have since gone extinct. Procyonids, uh, that's the raccoon family. The Kawatamundi has the ancestries in North America. Uh, mice, um, skunks, and so forth. And eventually, humans. Heading from the south going north, we had some monkeys. Now, they didn't get very far north. They're mostly limited to uh, Central America. Uh, same with anteaters and sloths. We don't have them up here or agoutis. But we have the Virginia opossum. I got one that hangs, at least one that hangs around at home. Uh, if you ever go in the southwest, uh, you'll find armadillos. Um, porcupines, you know, they made it all the way up to Alaska. They're South Americans. Um, and then giant ground sloths and toxodonts, which were sort of the South American native ungulate groups. Those were once either present in the south or in the case of the uh, ground sloths all the way up to Alaska. Um, they aren't with us anymore, but they were here. In fact, if we track over time, we could look for South American animals that went north and North American animals that went south. We see there are some early exchanges and I'll as I'll show, that's probably due not to the Isthmus of Panama, but a different pathway. But at, as we get close to about 3 million years, that's when the interchange really goes, gets going. Starts about 5 million years, really gets going about 3 million years or so. Uh, the previous pathway looks like it's through what are now the islands of the Caribbean. That that might have been sort of a proto-isthmus, and that as plate tectonics moved that out of the way, the new isthmus formed and allowed for this big transition. And so by the late part of what's called the Pleistocene, we'll talk more about the Pleistocene next Thursday, or Thursday of next week, we'll have a mixture in South America and in Southern North America of both South American and North American animals. At about the same time this is going on, in the savannas of Africa, uh, the forests are breaking up, and a new group 
of organisms is showing up from among the once tree-dwelling primates. That's a story we'll get into in the, starting in the Thursday of next week. Uh, but before then, oh, and, and that particular group will spread to Eurasia and eventually the whole world. But first, on Thursday, this week, we'll talk about the origin of the largest of all mammals, the whales. And then we'll move on to not a group, but a lifestyle, the mammals of the frozen world. And with it, why are there ice ages? So take care and see you later. <laughs>